Who doesn't love buffalo chicken? How about, for a change, let's get some veggies in there and enjoy some buffalo cauliflower. I'm going to show you how to make this delicious dish next on Cambridge Foods by Isaac. Okay everybody, um, first thing you want to decide is whether you want to use fresh cauliflower or frozen. Um, I decided to use frozen uh, mainly for the fact that I didn't feel like cutting up ahead of cauliflower and cleaning up. The nice thing too is when you buy frozen, they're already cut to pretty much the size that you want to use to make your um, buffalo pieces anyway. So what I did was I let this defrost uh, in my sink on the, the colander here. But anytime you defrost veggies, they're still very moist. So what I decided to do is just dump them out here on this uh, clean kitchen towel. And uh, what we'll do is just spread them out. And we'll let the towel soak up some of that extra moisture. And just wrap it up. Pat it down. And we're just going to let this sit, I don't know, maybe five minutes or so, just to get any excess moisture out. And then we will get started on our batter. So bear with me one second. I'm going to just get the bowl and the ingredients ready, and we're going to learn how to make an awesome batter for this cauliflower. So the first thing we're going to need is all-purpose flour. We're going to use three quarters of a cup of that. So let me go ahead and scoop that out right now. I'm using a quarter cup measure here. So there's one. Two. And three. Okay. So the next thing that we're going to add is two teaspoons of garlic powder. So we'll get that going. Okay, there's one. And two. The next thing that we're going to add is two teaspoons of onion powder. bottom of my jar of my onion powder. Okay. Next, after onion powder, we're going to add one teaspoon of cumin. And I've got that right here in a bag. Okay. Okay, one teaspoon of cumin. And next is one teaspoon of paprika. One teaspoon of paprika. And next is a quarter teaspoon of sea salt. Any salt will do really, but sea salt is one of the healthiest. So there's a quarter teaspoon of salt. And lastly, one quarter teaspoon of ground pepper. Okay, that's it for our dry ingredients. Now, by the way, I have my oven preheating right now to 450. You want to get the oven nice and hot for this one. Helps dry out the cauliflower, make that batter extra crispy. So <clears throat> we've added our dry ingredients. The next step is to add one cup of water. And what we're going to do is we're going to add it gradually because we don't want the batter soupy. We also don't want it clumpy. So we just add little by little. And I like to mix with a fork when I'm doing a small batch of anything here. So actually I'm going to get that started and stir that together. 
and then we'll make like a little well in the middle of the bowl. Okay, it seems to be mixed. Got our well there. And we'll just start pouring a little bit at a time. Okay, we'll go a little more. You can smell the spices and the garlic. It's really, really good right now. You can see that the paprika, the red is starting to come into the batter, which is what we want. Remember to scrape the edges of your bowl as you go. You notice the batter's getting kind of gummy. Add the rest of the water. And if we need to, we can always add even more water. It all depends. Everybody's um, flour that they use is different, which means the calorie count's going to be different too. I mean, you can definitely use a, um, a there goes the oven. You can use a, a rice flour if you want to go gluten-free with this. Um, and then just depending on the brand you buy of the all-purpose flour, some of them are like 100 calories a quarter cup, some are a little more. So just know your calorie count for your flours if you want to get an exact uh, count here. It's actually a new type of flour that I discovered, and I'm doing some experiments with it now. So if that goes well, I'll actually do a video uh, highlighting that. So uh, actually something made for diabetics to help them. And it's uh, way lower calories than what we're doing here. Okay, so let's just look at that batter. Kind of thick. I am going to add a little bit more water to that. Okay, just add a little bit more water at a time. You can always add more, but you can't take away. So let's try that. It's looking better. Let's see. Yeah, I think that's it. It's getting kind of runny. That's what we want. Okay, so the next step is to dip the cauliflower in this. And we're going to transfer it to um, some baking sheets. And you want to make sure that you do your baking sheets in parchment paper. And just hold on one second. I'm going to bring that all into scene so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so we're back. I've uh, zoomed out a little bit so you can get a look at my tray here. And as you see, I just have some parchment paper lining this. And the reason we do this is so that the uh, batter won't stick to the bottom of the pan. Even if you spray it with cooking spray, most of the time the batter will burn and adhere to the pan. So you're losing half that flavor that you want to put in there. So we've got that said and done. You may need to do two trays of this depending on um, the size of your trays. So I have an extra one ready to go in case I need it. So all we're going to do, I got my cauliflower here. We're just going to dip a few in this batter. And we want to toss them all around. Just get them in there. You will get messy doing this, but you know what? That's half the fun of cooking. So let's see. Let me scoop out one. Just want to give it a shake. Any excess off of that. Okay, and then just lay them down. Let's grab another one. Lay them down. So again, you got here with the uh, store-bought cauliflower. It's chopped up a bunch of different sizes. You can have little pieces, big pieces, whatever you want. And when all is said and done, this will make anywhere from two to four servings, depending on how big a serving you want. Um, it's really, really great alternative to getting some veggies in you if you're not a veggie person like me and uh, you love buffalo chicken. When this is all done with the uh, buffalo sauce on it, it's going to have such a great taste you're not going to care that it's cauliflower and not chicken. So I didn't believe it at first until I tried it, but trust me, they are that good. So what I'm going to do now is just give the camera a pause. I don't want you to have to sit here while I do all my little pieces, and I'll return as soon as the trays are full. Okay, we're back, and as you can see, I ended up needing two trays here. 
but you see that the cauliflower is completely coated. It's got a really, really nice smell. I can smell the cumin, uh, especially in the garlic coming through. Um, <clears throat> so these are ready now to be put in the oven. We're going to bake them anywhere from 25 to 30 minutes. Um, <clears throat> you also want to make sure that about halfway through cooking, you flip them over so they can get nice and toasty on all sides. So we're going to do that right now. So when I come back, we're going to pull them out of the oven. And you got to look at how they, uh, how they turn out. Okay, folks, we are back. It's been about 15 minutes and um, I just took these out of the oven and we're going to give them a little flip. So just take a little spatula, turn them over. If you can pick them up and pluck them, even better. Let's get it done quickly. You can see how that batter browned up kind of nicely on these pieces. We want them to get nice and crunchy on the outside. And we've got pieces of all sizes here so you can just snack to your heart's content on them. So, all right, two-handed. Here we go. I think they'd be a lot hard, hotter to touch coming out of a 450 degree oven, but they're great. So, so keep turning them. You see that one kind of stuck a little bit to the parchment paper, but that's okay. Whatever batter comes off, the hot sauce will definitely make up for. You can see what a mess this would be without the parchment paper. Definitely always want to use parchment paper when making this recipe. Okay, these are good to go. We're going to put these back in the oven. Now, remember I said to cook these for about a half an hour, so I'm going to put these in for another 15 minutes. And after I put them in there, what I'm going to do is show you how to make the buffalo sauce. So give me a moment, I'll be right back. Okay, this next step is pretty simple. All we're going to do is take one tablespoon of our light butter. This time I'm using Smart Balance. And I'm not even going to measure. I'm just going to take a real tablespoon and uh, try to level that out. Now, of course, it's warm in here because I've got the 450 degree oven going, so this butter is kind of melty. But that's about a tablespoon right there. And all we're going to do now is just put that in the microwave for about 30 seconds or so, maybe a little bit less. And as soon as that's done, we're going to stir in some hot sauce, about one cup of hot sauce with that. Okay, so our butter is nice and melted here, as you can see in the bottom here. All we're going to do is add one cup of hot sauce, and I'm using Frank's Red Hot. Now, if you really don't like things super hot like I do, you can put half a cup of maybe barbecue sauce and then half a cup of the red hot sauce. Just know your calories as you're adding to it. This red hot sauce is zero calories, so I'm going to do that right now. And then we'll just mix it together. Well, that's about a cup. Let's blend that. Okay, and now what we're going to do is we're going to take our um, cauliflower. I just took it out of the oven. The extra 15 minutes has gone by. And what we're going to do now is just dip our cauliflower into this mixture. So I've got my tray here. And prepare to get dirty again. Just plop them in and scoop them out. It's that simple. You just want them to soak in that flavor. And then what we're going to do afterward is put the remainder of the sauce over them. And you probably won't even end up using all of it. The last time I did this, the sauce, uh, there was a lot of extra sauce and whew, it was hot. But if you're like me, you love hot burning things. 
And like I say, if you're not into the super hot, um, just mix it with barbecue sauce and you should be fine. So I'm just gonna pluck these in here. And I'm just gonna continue this and put these back in the oven. You will bake them for another 25 to 30 minutes and then we will um, put the extra sauce on them and they'll be all done. So I'm gonna pause this and the next time you see me will be these coming out of the oven. I just wanted to mention um, before I skipped to this scene, um, I put the cauliflower back into the oven but you gotta take them out after 15 minutes again and flip them one more time. So I'm doing that right now. After you flip them, you put them back in the oven for the final 15 and you should be good to go. Okay guys, here they are right out of the oven. I did have to stop it a few minutes early. You notice on this side here, they're a little more charred. I couldn't fit them both on the same rack in the oven. So this one was starting to burn. I figured this one's probably cooked long enough. This one is definitely cooked. Some of the little pieces burned, so we're not gonna use those. But anyway, let me show you what to do now. These are cooked, these are ready to go, so now we're just gonna toss them in the extra sauce, plate them up, and we're gonna enjoy. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is just take these pieces, toss them right back into the sauce, get a little flavor on them, and just plate them up. Let's stir those around a little bit. And remember, these are going to be hot. Add them on here. And remember, this is going to make either two to four servings, depending on how hungry you are, if you want to add something to it. Uh, I know a lot of people like to dip their buffalo stuff into blue cheese, um, have some celery with it. I'm not like that. I like french fries. <laughs> so what I usually do is take about half of this with a plate of fries and enjoy that. Now, French fries, uh, depending on what you use, especially if you bake them, you can have them, um, a good number of them for low calories. So I'm not gonna do that in this video. I just wanna show you the finished product here. And um, I'm gonna finish that up and show you the finished plate and we'll enjoy, okay? I'll be right back. So folks, there you have it. And this is only half of the uh, portion that we baked today. So total calories for this is only 545 calories for the entire thing. So like I say, I can split this in half. Sometimes I'll make some fries with it. But for this video, I just wanna show you how great it looks by itself. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can get a better idea. Get a real close up here. Oops, let's see if that can focus. Let's back up a little bit. All right, you see there, it looks like roasted pieces of chicken here. So now, let's see how it tastes. Okay, everyone, it's the moment we've been waiting for. I'm gonna dig in. Let's see how good this tastes. Mmm. Definitely, you get that hot sauce taste right away. Remember, if it's too hot for you, you can always cut it down with barbecue sauce. But this is great. You got a nice meaty piece here. You don't know it's cauliflower until you bite into it. And really, with the flavor of the batter um, and the hot sauce, the cauliflower, you don't even notice it. It's just to give it more like um, body and texture. So this is really good. Like I say, I like to enjoy this with a side of fries. You can enjoy it any way you wish. Try this recipe out, tell me how you like it. And be sure to like and subscribe and share this video with anyone you think might enjoy this. I'm going to continue enjoying my meal here. So thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time on Cambridge Foods by Isaac.